everyone, in this tutorial I'll show you how to use the Adventure Kit to create two different characters which have two uh, different abilities regarding movement. The one character will be a normal size character which can go into a tight space and the other one will be a bigger character which can not go into the tight space but jump large distances on ledges. So first we'll create the um, usual, the regular character and uh, therefore we create a new blueprint and type uh, the uh, type ADV sample to get the venture kit sample character and call, we call this um, regular oops, regular character and then we we'll create another one which is again extended from the sample character and we'll name that big character. Okay, so um, the big character should be bigger, so we'll open up the asset and increase the capsule size, let's say, to 100. Oh, let's 110, make them really big and scale up the mesh accordingly. Oop, maybe not like that, but instead uniformly. Yeah, that's pretty big. Okay, then we'll place the big character, and the regular character in the level. You can already see they are quite differently sized. And uh, now in order to uh, use the the character both will uh, select them and uh, well let's select both and we'll check um, the auto possession so under auto possess player we'll select player zero which means once the level starts uh, this character will be the default pawn pawn of the player so no extra player will be will be spawned and instead we're using uh, this character. And uh, I'll quickly open the level blueprint and we'll add a bit of functionality so we can quickly switch between two characters um, whenever we hit tab. So first uh, right click and type tab to get the keyboard event for tab and then we'll check uh, which of the characters is the current pawn of the, of the player. So type get player pawn and now we have to um, create two references, so we select both of the characters, right click and select create references to two selected actors and now we see, okay, is the current player pawn equal to the regular character and if that is we want to start using the big character and otherwise we start want to start using the regular character. So we create a branch So, and now we'll get the player controller by right clicking and typing get player controller and from the player controller we click and drag and use the function possess which uh, is responsible for taking control over a pawn. So in this case we press tab then we ask OK uh, the current character is the regular character, so we want to start possessing the big one. And then we drag out another possess. And in the other case, when the big character is currently active, we want to start using the regular character. Okay, compile that. Let me just save that. Now if I press tab in play mode, the characters switch. So I switch between both of the characters. Um, so that's the first step. The next step will uh, change the movement capabilities. So for the big character we want him to be able to jump very large distances. So we open up the asset and search for ledge jump and here we have a um, property called ledge dis jump distance vertical which and j lump ledge jump distance horizontal. And horizontal means how far the character can jump uh, in in a, in a horizontal direction. 
So we'll increase that up to 300 to make it very, very far. And let's drag out a ledge and place it very far away. So we can see here the ledges are currently configured to use the default size character. Uh, so once we drag the ledge too far away from the other one, um, the jump transition will no longer be generated because it's too far away for a character to jump that. So in order to make um, these ledge transition builders work with the big character, we'll select both of the ledges, right click, and choose Add Transition Character, Big Character. And now you can see the jump transition here is much further for the big character. And now if we play the regular character and jump up here, you see we can't can't jump to the right. So let's leave this ledge again and use the big character. And if we jump up here, you can see the big character can jump this. Now you notice uh, the big character is not quite aligning to the ledge because the mesh is much higher, uh, much, much larger. In order to fix that, we go again open up the big character and go to ledge offset, which is the uh, position that is the that the character is um, well moved away from the zone. And we want this to be let's say guessing here 70. Let's try this out. Oh, it's not right. A bit more. Let's make it 100. Let's see here. Oh, that's too much. Oh, uh, should be 90 then. We'll just have to have to approximate it. Oh, that's a, that's that's uh, fair enough. So now the character has a kind of correct offset from the zone. The next thing is uh, we want we now want only the small character to use the tight space and not the big character. Currently, if we use the big character, it will just enter the tight space just uh, like like the other smaller character. Uh, I forgot to set the tight space to tight space walking. Here we go. Now, both characters can enter the tight space because currently it is configured for the parent class of both characters. Uh, so any class derived from the sample character can use the tight space. We only want to um, have the small character use it. So we click, uh, we right click on the zone and instead of adding a character we overwrite the old character with regular. And now the big character will no longer react to the tight space and the small one will enter. However, of course, the big character can still just run through um, the zone, uh, but we want to block him, so we'll add a few walls, a few cube walls here, like so, and one on the other side. So now the big character can no longer cross through here. However, now the small character can also not cr no longer cross here because the collision uh, stucks him. And we, while in the zone, we don't want the character, the small character, to collide with these walls. In order to change that, we select both of the walls. In the details panel, go to collision presets, and instead of block all, we select custom and set the object type to zone collision. And that uh, makes it so the character will not collide with these objects while moving inside the zone. Uh, so go to the small character and oh, just have just make the camera not collide with the zone so we can look through it. Um, set the camera channel to ignore. And now can walk in this tight space. And the big character cannot. The 
doesn't fit. So, this is how you uh, configure characters to work um, differently and still use the same zones. So, the big character and the small character can both use these zones, but only the big character can jump between the ledges, uh, while only the small character can use the tight space. And you can uh, configure all of the needed um, movement variables through the Adventure Kit, uh, Adventure Kit character movement categories and all these variables that are exposed to the character. And just by configuring it you can really change how characters behave when using don'ts. So that's it. Thanks for watching.